With the recent masking update that Lightroom just did, some changes have occurred in the, the methods that I've taught in the past. And thanks to a subscriber named Jonathan Bacon, which by the way, amazing name, Bacon, yes please. Anyways, he commented and said, came across your video a few weeks ago, the concentration on my face going through your dodge and burn hack tutorial you did using a range mask, I think on that coastal shot. I've only just got my head around that and now it's all changed again with this. Great video, so helpful, back to concentrating for me. So that gave me the idea that I needed to do an updated dodge and burn hack video, teaching it with the new masking updates from Lightroom. So let's get started. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. First off, I wanna thank Jonathan again for the comments. I love hearing what you guys think of the videos and what you guys wanna see next, different techniques, stuff like that. So I appreciate each and every one of your comments. Now, we're gonna go over a Lightroom hack, but first you need to understand what dodging and burning, it, burning is. Simply, dodging is lightening and burning is darkening parts of the image. Now I've gone over this a couple of times in other videos, so I'm sure you already know. So let's get into Lightroom and just get started with it. Here we are in Lightroom, and this is the image we're gonna be working with. We're gonna be doing two images, one landscape and another one a portrait because you can use this technique for both because that was another comment that came up was, can you do this with portraits? And yes, you can. So with the new Lightroom hack, a few things have changed. This is the image we're working with. This is the before, this is the after. So I've done a basic edit to just to bring back the colors, but we can add a little bit more depth and a little bit more oomph to the image with this technique and it's super quick and easy. First, we're gonna click on the new masking image and we're going to click create new mask. Now these two masks are simply graduated filters that I added previous to the update. Let's go ahead and just delete those and get rid of them. That way we can just work with the dodging and burning. So the first thing, let's click linear gradient. and we're going to add one at the very top and you see how it covers the entire image. So first thing we're gonna do is burn. So we're gonna darken parts of the image. Now it's important to remember that when you're dodging and burning, you're gonna get a much better effect when you dodge or lighten the already light parts of the image and when you burn or darken the already dark parts of the image. You can do this technique and lighten darker areas or darken light areas. That is doable, but it always works better when you work with the innate details of the image. What's there and enhance what's there. When you try and push the bounds of things that don't exist, you can run into some difficulties, but it is doable, it, it is doable. So let's go ahead and burn first. So first we're going to darken it down. Now we're gonna do this quite a lot, that way you can really see the effect and then we will adjust after. And we're gonna double click on this mask and we're gonna put burn so we know which one we're working with, which is a new feature for the masking in Lightroom and it is awesome. Organization on steroids, love it. So then we're gonna press and hold the Alt or Option button and click intersect. And we're gonna intersect this with a luminance range. A quick recap of luminance, it is affecting the darkness and lightness of an image. So the left side of this bar here is the dark. As you move to the right, you go through the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and the whites. So we're gonna take this burn effect, the darkening effect, out of the lights so it only affects the darks and the shadows. So you're gonna click this little box here and you're gonna slide this all the way over. You notice that the image is already changing and you're gonna slide this all the way here. Now with the update, it kind of changed the effect that this technique does. You'll notice that you have this additional slider here, which is the fall off, which is kind of like the feather of this effect. So you can't just slide it over and, and boom, it looks great. With this new update, it allows you to be more specific, but it also, allowed more bleed of the effect, more um, feather of the effect. So you have to find the middle range of this. So we want the primary effect to be affecting the darks to the shadows. So this is the, the blacks to the shadows here. Then we want the feather to kind of smoothly transition into the lights, but we don't want it in the lights. So if you have it all the way here and you turn on show luminance mask, it kind of shows that it's all over the place, even in the sky where there's whites and highlights and we don't want that. But if you go all the way here, it is very aggressive. It's like blacks and shadows and then nothing. So when you look at this, 
it, it, it looks corrupted. It looks kind of bad. So you have to find the middle ground. So we're going to feather this until about the mid-tones here. That way, it's a smoother transition. If we turn on the luminance mask, we see that the red here is primarily on the blacks and shadows, but slightly on the mid-tones and then not at all on the whites and highlights like you see in the sky. So that's exactly what we want. If we zoom in on the image, you'll notice that there's no real corruption, there's no bad effects that this has caused. So that's what we want, we want a smooth transition. So let's go back into the masks here and let's create a new mask. So create new mask, linear gradient, and we're gonna create one down here. And we're gonna name this one Dodge. And then we're going to brighten the image. Again, we're gonna brighten it really bright so it looks terrible and then adjust after. Next, let's click on the mask Dodge, press and hold Alter Option, click Intersect, and then go down to Luminance Range Mask again. And this one, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna pull this one out of the blacks and shadows. So all the way, and we want this to affect the whites and the highlights. And notice here, it is very blown out. But again, I wanna show you that corruption thing. This doesn't look good. This also doesn't look good. See, this really shows that harsh transition that you have to blend through. So we want the feather to go to the midtones. That way it's a smooth transition and looks really clean. Once you have it where you want it, where it's, you don't see that corruption, it's just smoothly transitioning through the image. We're going to lower the highlights to about 0.5. Generally, I wouldn't go above 0.5. Sometimes you can, but 0.5 and below is kind of your sweet spot. A, a really good dodge and burn is subtle that someone doesn't go, that looks dodge and burned but it's enough that they see the difference. They see the, the change in contrast and it just kind of pops a little bit more. It's a very subtle, subtle change. Now, one of the cool features that you could have done in the old Lightroom, but now it makes it so much easier. We don't want this to affect the sky because we want the sky to be kind of moody. And when you brighten up the sky, you, you blow it out. So let's click subtract and select sky. This is going to pull this entire effect out of the sky and make it look awesome. So now if we do this, it's selected the sky beautifully and the dodge and burn is just affecting the highlights and the whites in the landscape, the foreground of the image and the sky remains untouched. So, so cool. Oh my gosh, it's such a cool effect. All right, so now that that dodge is done, let's go back to the burn and let's, uh, let's adjust that because it's a little too dark. So let's lighten this a little bit again your range is negative 0.5 and below, so anything between zero and negative 0.5. So I think I'm going to settle at just, well, well let's say negative 0 0.5, 0 0.2. <laughs> All right, now let's look at the before and after. So let's make this, let's move this over here so it's out of the way. All right, so here is the before and here is the after. Now it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. It just creates a lot more depth in the image and it makes it look more layered. So this is a really easy technique and it just adds a little extra pop to your image. Really nice. Now if you wanted to do a little bit more, you could then add a linear gradient and just kind of darken this a little. There we go. And this just kind of pulls you into the image from the foreground. I always recommend using a linear gradient or graduated filter. I'm not gonna be able to call it linear gradient. I think I'm just gonna continue calling it graduated filter because that's what they are. They're a graduated filter, not a linear gradient. Jeez, Lightroom, what are you doing? So that's it for this image. So let's go on to the portraits, but really fast, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because you know this technique is badass. You know it, it deserves that thumbs up from you. Okay, <laughs> let's go on to the next image. Here's the next photo we're gonna work with. Now, when you're dealing with portraits, the highlights and the shadows are a little bit more sensitive because they show quite a lot more. They're, uh, they're more blaringly obvious when you affect them. So the technique here is a little different than just slapping on a linear gradient and affecting the luminance. The great thing about this new update is you can use the luminance mask as a mask as itself. Let me show you what I mean. So let's click masking, and rather than applying a linear gradient or a brush or anything like that, we're simply going to click luminance range, and then we're going to do the darks first. So let's darken the image, and then we're gonna pull this out of the whites, and we only want this to affect the blacks and the shadows. Now immediately, you'll notice what I was talking about earlier, about it being more sensitive. Notice how it, the image looks like basically the Crypt Keeper now. It looks terrible. The blacks are just not smooth. So when you're working with portraits, you have to find a happy medium. 
and that is working with the feather. So if you move this back and forth, if you move this all the way up, it kind of takes out a lot of the dimension in the image. It kind of flattens it out. But if you do it too much, it makes it look kind of, again, like kind of Halloween-y. So you gotta find that happy medium. The first thing we notice is we're doing too much, minus 0.99. Let's go ahead and get in our decent range, which is about between zero and minus 0.5. So I think we're gonna do just a shade, let's say 0.32. And then let's find our, our spot. I want some shadow, but not much. And I think right there looks good. And then let's pull this up a little to affect a little bit more. Okay, so here, uh, let's rename this burn. Good, here's the before, here's the after. Okay, good, a little bit more, a little bit more contouring. Let's create a new mask, luminance range, and we're gonna brighten this one up. So let's get into our range, 0.42, and we're gonna pull this out of the darks, just in the highlights. And again, you see that, that corruption there, that uh, Crypt Keeper looking stuff. If we pull it out completely, then it looks really bad. It completely shreds the image. So we gotta have to really feather this one, and let's pull this in more. This is not looking great. Let's find that medium. Good. No, let's see. Okay, good. That is looking okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop some of the highlights. There we go, that's better. And we're gonna go back to the, let's rename this uh, Dodge. And let's go into the burn category and we're going to raise the shadows a little. All right, so let's look at the before, after. Before, after. With a little tweaking, you can really make this work for you. I find with this new update, you can be a lot more precise, but it also requires you to tweak it a little bit more to find that fine line that it works without corrupting the light in the image. And that's all there is for this technique. It is a very fast and easy way to add a little extra oomph and a little bit extra contrast to your image. If you're new to this Lightroom update, go watch this video here because it goes over in depth the new update, which is absolutely amazing. And by the end of it, you'll be a master at these masking techniques. So it was good to see you and I will see you in the next video.